And we're back! Uh, the second half of our exam three review, where we're going to focus on bonding, covalent bonding. We're going to determine uh, the number of valence electrons in a molecule or ion, uh, shape, bond angle, and polarity. So we've been doing a lot of this in class. We had a little ball and stick model lab that we did in class uh, that hopefully you folks can refer to. Now, uh, you won't have a ball and stick model to work with on, on the uh, on the exam so hopefully you'll be able to wrap your mind about what's happening as we draw these structures to determine the shape bond angle and polarity okay so first up we have ch4 uh, valence electrons carbons in group 4 14 excuse me so that's four valence electrons and each hydrogen has one valence electron so it looks like we have eight valence to work with and we'll put carbon in the center and we'll put hydrogen on the four sides and we'll connect it with a pair of electrons. Remember, each line represents two electrons. So two, four, six, eight, that's exactly what I'm allowed. Now, when you have four pairs around the central atom there, the electronic geometry is tetrahedral. And since all four are bonding, the molecular geometry or shape is also tetrahedral. And the bond angle is not 90. Please don't say 90. You're going to say, well, because it looks that way. Remember, kiddos, when we have a tetrahedron, we tried to draw this model here to help you understand that this and this are coming out uh, of the page at you, and this one here is going back into the page. So we really have a bond angle of 109.5 degrees, not 90. Those Pairs of electrons, whether they're bonding or not, in this case they're all bonding, want to be as far away from each other as possible. Uh, dipoles, let's see. We, are, we do have a, bond, a polar bond, so each bond does have a mini dipole, but they cancel each other out. So we have a nonpolar molecule. You can use your spaceship analogy when you determine polarity. It comes in quite handy. HCN, let's see, H has one valence, carbon has four valence, Nitrogen has five valence. Looks like I'm allowed 10 electrons here. So we'll go H, bonded to C, and then to N. Now I'm going to try a single bond here just for fun, K. Okay? And that means that carbon's going to need two more pair around it, and that nitrogen's going to need three more pair. You'll see if I'm only allowed 10, I've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So that's not it. Okay, it's not a couple of single bonds. So let's go ahead. I'm going to jump right to the chase. I happen to know there's a triple bond to the nitrogen, and of course a single bond. That's all hydrogen can make. And now my carbon has four pairs around it. It's, it's satisfied. The nitrogen needs another pair. So two, four, six, eight, ten. Boom. There's my Lewis structure. Now there are absolutely no non-bonding pairs around the carbon to change the angle of that. So this one not only looks linear, it is linear. And of course the bond angle for linear is the easy 180 degrees. And we have a stronger dipole going this way than in the other direction, so they do not completely cancel each other out. So that guy is polar. Okay. BEH2. Well, beryllium has two valence. Each hydrogen has one valence, so we have four valence to work with here, kiddos. Remember, beryllium is one of the exceptions to your octet rule. It only needs two pair around it for reasons we'll talk about later. Actually, we talked about it in our hybridization discussion, but we won't worry about that for the exam. So we end up with that guy right there. That's it. Beryllium satisfied with just two pairs. Of course, hydrogen is satisfied with one pair. So you're finished with BEH2 as far as the Lewis structure is concerned. There are no non-bonding pairs around beryllium to push the angle down. So that guy, once again, not only looks linear, it is linear. So that's 180 degrees. Now these dipoles, they exist, but they cancel each other out. So that guy is non-polar. Okay, PO4, 3 negative. Phosphorus, folks, has 5 valence. Each oxygen has 6 valence. And I want to add 3 to the total because it's a negative 3 charge. That means I had to dump in 3 additional electrons. So let's see, I have 24 plus 5. And hopefully I counted right. That's 32 valence. That sounds like a pretty number. Let's put the oxygens on the four sides of phosphorus with a single pair. 
and then we'll give each oxygen a full octet. This is sort of fun to do, isn't it? Now it's an ion, kiddos, so the folks that read this need to know that we dumped in three more electrons. So I put brackets around it and I put the charge on the outside. Just so the reader knows, I had to add three electrons to complete that Lewis structure. Four pairs, that is not 90 degrees, kiddos. When four pairs are around the central atom and they're as far away from each other as possible, we call that tetrahedral. If you want to go back and watch the videos with the ball and stick model, I think I've made several like that for you. You can check it out and actually maybe envision that a bit better. Bond angle, all of those guys are bonding, so it's 109.5 degrees. And normally we would say it's nonpolar because all those dipoles would cancel each other. But because it is an ion, we would say it was polar. There's an uneven distribution of those three extra electrons we had to dump in. So whenever you have an ion, we're going to say that it's polar. Okay? Okay, O3, that's ozone, folks. So it's three oxygens, and each oxygen has six valence. So it looks like I have 18 valence to work with here. And I'm going to go ahead and jump right to the chase. I know I'm going to have a, a double bond there and a single bond here. This oxygen will need two more pair. This oxygen needs one more pair to give it its octet. And this one would need three more pair. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 8. That works, 18. Now, do you folks remember what resonance is? Resonance means that's really not one double bond and one single bond. It's actually shared in both positions. So in reality, it's a bond and a half uh, stuck to each oxygen. Uh, so what we do is we would draw this Lewis structure over again, showing the double bond in the other position. So this would be the true Lewis structure. On your exam, if you just want to put if resonance structures are needed, plus RES, which stands for plus resonance, that'll be adequate for me. Okay, now we have three regions of electron density around the center atom. That means that we're going to have a bent molecule. That guy's going to be bent. So this non-bonding pair is going to push those bonding pair down and give it a bent shape. Now, when you have three regions of electron density, the largest the bond angle could be would be 120 degrees. But since that pair is non-bonding, it's a puffier electron cloud, and it pushes the bonding pairs down about 2 degrees more than we'd expect. So the bond angle is actually about 118 degrees, not 120, because of that non-bonding, or what we call lone pair up there, on that center oxygen. And because it's bent, we will have an uneven distribution of charge here. So this guy will be slightly polar. So I would predict it to be polar. Okay? Alright, SO3. Sulfur has six valence. Each oxygen has six valence. So we have 18 plus 6, 24 valence. Okay? And let's see, we're going to go S. I happen to know there's a double bond and two singles. We'll just save a little bit of time here. That means that oxygen needs two more pair. This oxygen needs three more pair, and so does this guy right there. And that sulfur is okay, because it has four pairs around it, because it has a double bond and two singles. Now, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Okay, I did a good job there. I'm going to put plus R-E-S. That means plus resonance. That means that double bond could also be down here and here. It's shared in all three positions. So in reality, it's a bond and a third uh, to each oxygen. So we would illustrate that, either drawing it three different times with the double bond in all three positions, or I'm allowing you to put plus R-E-S, which means, hey, there's resonance structures there. Okay, we have three regions of electron density, so we call that trigonal planar. Okay, they're all going to be on one plane. And the bond angle is going to be exactly 120 degrees this time. There are no non-bonding pairs on the central atom to mess with that bond angle. So I'm going to expect it to be 120. And the dipoles would cancel. Use your little spaceship analogy here. In reality, this guy will look like this. With 120, so you have a dipole going that way, that way, and that way, and they'll all cancel. So that guy I would expect to be nonpolar. Okay, a couple more. This is a nice little review for you. If you can do these, folks, without my help, you're going to do a great job on the exam. You really are. 
Okay, chlorine has seven valence. Each oxygen has six valence, and I'm going to add one to the total. So 24, 31, 32 valence. Hey, that's a good number, isn't it? We'll put chlorine in the middle, and we'll put the four oxygens on the four sides. Give each oxygen a full octet, and you guys can see where this is heading. That comes out to be 32 electrons, doesn't it? So that's perfect. Now I'm going to let the reader know that, hey, I had to add an electron to make this work, so I'm going to put it in brackets with the charge on the outside. So we have four pairs. Four pairs are not 90 degrees, kiddos. Remember, four pairs as far away from each other are going to be tetrahedral. Remember, uh, if you have a hard time remembering that, just try to stick four balloons tied together. They're not going to flatten out on one plane. You're going to have one popping up and, and, and three down below like that illustration up here. Uh, bond angle will be a nice pretty 109.5 exactly. There are no non-bonding pairs around the central atom to mess with that, so that's going to be a pretty 109.5. And normally we would say non-polar, but remember kiddos, that's an ion. So we're going to say, okay, all ions have an uneven distribution of electrons. We're going to call that polar. Okay, SeO2. Selenium is in group four, uh, 16. That's six valence. And each oxygen is also in group six. So that's six valence. That's 12 plus six. That's 18 valence. So let's try this here, kiddos. We're going to go Se. Uh, let's try a... Uh, double bond on one side and a single bond on the other. I think this is the right Lewis structure, so there's eight around oxygen. The selenium needs another pair to give me eight, and that oxygen will need three more pair, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. Yay, I win. What do I need to add here, folks? That's right, plus resonance. So that double bond is shared in both positions. It's really not a double and a single. It's a bond and a half, if you can imagine that. Okay, we have three regions of electron density, folks. Just like we did up here, right? So if all of them were bonding, right, it would be trigonal planar. But that pair's not bonding. So there's no, there's no atom up here. But it does affect those two pair. It pushes them down, and it makes that guy bent. Now the highest bond angle we can have with three pairs is 120 degrees. But since that non-bonding takes up more space, it's going to reduce that about 2 degrees. So we're going to go with a bond angle of about 118. And since it's nice and bent, the dipoles will not cancel. That guy is going to be polar. Okay, last one, folks. Ammonium, NH4+, nitrogen is in group five, or 15, sorry, so it's 5 valence. Each hydrogen has one valence. I'm going to subtract one from the total. That's a positive ion there, kiddos. Gives me eight valence to work with. So I'll put nitrogen, and we'll go ahead and bond it to four hydrogens, just like this. We're going to put brackets around it so the reader knows that in this case I had to take an electron away for that to work. Two, four, six, eight. Hey, that's what I'm allowed. Four pairs, kiddos. Don't say 90. All right. That is tetrahedral. And the bond angle is going to be a nice, pretty 109.5. Normally we'd say that's nonpolar, but hey, kiddos, we have an ion again, so we're going to call that polar. Okay. Now you're going to notice on my review, folks, we, had, we didn't have any expanded octets. Uh, so don't worry about expanded octets on this exam. Um, if, if, if they do show up on the test, folks, um, we'll make them extra credit. So you'll see if, if I decide to put expanded octets, there'll be a bonus section on the exam for you guys to deal with, and you can attempt that if you'd like. Okay. All right, this is the end of the second half of our review. Please study hard. Uh, put some time and effort into this. Remember, I know a lot of it's going to be shape, bond angle, polarity, Lewis structures, valence electrons, but there are other things on the exam you folks need to prepare yourselves for, so don't forget to give them some attention. Okay. Work hard, study hard. You guys can do this. I know this seemed really hard at first, but you know, I got a sense that your confidence was building after we had done this for a couple of days, and hopefully you're starting to get excited and can hardly wait to take the test. I remember back in the day I would get like that when I really understood a concept and I wanted to show my teacher, hey, I can do this. This, is, this isn't this is really as hard as I thought it was, and I could prove myself. So you guys have the opportunity to do that in class next time. So good luck. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.